I have a wee proposition, if you wouldn't mind giving me a moment of your time. Would you consider just f***ing off, like right now? I mean, look at you all. I've never seen so many white people in one place. I thought I'd rode into a country music concert. And you, Gandalf the Grey, you're no better. Soon to be Gandalf the White. What about Gandalf the Black? Or Gandalf the Asian? But no, it's got to be Gandalf the White. And look at this, faithless woodland sprite. At least you've got somebody non-binary as a leader. That's something, I suppose. What's going on, everyone? Jeremy here from The Quartering, and wow, it's been a, a weird, wild week, and uh, we're still a few weeks from the actual release of Lord of the Rings, The Rings of the Power, and the ring a ling a ding dong series with no rings in it. And uh, the media is spinning up its attack on fans because we didn't love it. We didn't immediately fall uh, and, and never question anything. We're seeing the normal tropes from mainstream media where... Criticism, critiques, are just brushed aside with various words called isms and, and bigots and all this type of stuff attacking the fans and, and lumping all of their legitimate criticism in with some of the most vile stuff. Look, I'm not going to say that there's zero chance that anyone uh, said something over the line. Of course that happens, and it's not okay. And, you know, and I've said that, and I will continue to say that. But what I will also say is that that doesn't matter because they don't listen anyway. They, they just say, oh, well, you can't possibly um, be coming at this in good faith, even though you know you own the Director's Cut DVD series and you saw the original trilogy 15 times in the movie theater and you've read the books. But because you point out that there's a problem with our forced diversity in it, everything you say is therefore ignored. And uh, this latest push from the media has been absolutely insane. So insane that I think I'm going to need a, a change of uh, uh, what I'm wearing. So uh, just a quick word from this video sponsor, Sheath. Huge shout out to this video sponsor. That's right, Sheath. These boxers are designed to keep your balls off your legs. Sheath has three individual compartments to keep everything down there separate and cool and comfortable. And hey, since they've been a long time sponsor, I've heard from many of you who have tried out Sheath and really love it. They were invented by a US Army soldier who came up with the idea for Sheath during his second tour in Iraq, where it was hot as heck and his boys needed to breathe. And on top of all sorts of awesome designs for Sheath, they've added all sorts of winter items, hoodies, gator necks, and all sorts of base layers. Head on over to the link in the description and pin comment down below. Use my promo code to save and support the channel and keep everything nice, cool, and dry. Oh, we see like uh, now the Daily Beast writing, you know, the Lord of the Rings, Rings of Power team already fears backlash against the cast. Why? Because someone told them that it was good marketing. I suppose I should put the, the article on the, on the screen. Um, here's Yahoo News uh, running the same article. You know, the Lord of the Rings, Rings of Power too. So the, the, you have Yahoo News pushing it too. Now you see this article on Bounding into Comics. Predictably, the Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Power executive producer, calls critics racists. The Rings of Power executive producer, Lindsay Weber, predictably decided to go after the Rings, Lord of the Rings and token fans and call them racists. Weber made it abundantly clear that the production of the show would be a... Weber made it abundantly clear that the production of the show would be skewing to token's work when she told Vanity Fair in February that it felt only natural for us that the adaptation of Tolkien's work would reflect what the world actually looks like. I know when I was watching the original uh, Lord of the Rings trilogy, I was really frustrated that we didn't have orcs, um, orakai, and, you know, oliphants and things like that in the real world. It made, this, it made the movie almost impossible to watch. Tolkien is for everyone, she added. His stories are about his fictional races doing their best to work together when they leave isolation on their own of their own cultures and come together months after making it extremely clear that the show would not be following tokens works weber is now accusing critics of racism she told time magazine we're all up for criticism we're not up for racism and again i've talked i talked about this yesterday um i agree with that 
like I hundred percent agree. If if somebody's just like saying something blatantly over the line about one of the actors of the show and their ethnicity, that's not okay. That's not criticism. That's dumb. That's bad. That's I disavow that. Um, but the problem is, you the showrunners just call all criticism that. It's not just about Weber. Showrunner J.D. Payne also told Time Magazine that criticism of the Galadriel wearing armor and the inclusion of the Black Elf will not be tolerated. He described critics ironically quoting Tolkien as creatures of dull and lumpish nature that had no more language than beasts. Let's be clear here. It's not racist to want characters that are described by J.R.R. Tolkien in a certain way to look like those characters when his stories are being adapted to television. As an example... No one wants Black Panther to be played by Ryan Gosling. They want Black Panther to be portrayed by a black man. No one would want Bruce Lee to be played by Chuck Norris. They want him to be portrayed by an Asian man. YouTuber Just Some Guy more eloquently explains, quote, Middle Earth is basically Northwestern Europe, mostly England. He, he native people, the native people of those areas were all white. So the races of Middle Earth, of course, would be white. And we know that's true because Tolkien described what they look like. They're all white. The actors can be played by non-white. If they can pass European or without, with or without makeup, they can play those characters, he details. He, they just need to look the part. Casting non-white actors in Middle Earth is like casting white actors in a Black Panther movie. It makes no sense. It's also not racist or sexist to want characters like Galadriel to be portrayed on the screen as they were described by Tolkien in his works. Galadriel was not a warrior. She did not lead soldiers into battle. Um, you know, by the way, from a physical look of that character, um, you know, she does look how I would think. Gal I have no problem with the look of Galadriel. I have a, a problem with the uh, I am woman, hear me roar. I am, uh, you know, Supreme Mary Sue uh, I've, I've, and I will uh, complete everything and uh, in a stronger and easier way than previous Galadriels you may know. Amazon Prime Video, Amazon Studio showrunners Patrick McCain, J.D. Payne, all and executive producer Lindsay Weber portraying her as such are the ones are the ones such as that are the ones in the wrong. And despite Weber claiming they can handle criticism, they clearly can't, as she is now name calling her critics and using the media to attack fans and the quote global audience that Prime is very much trying to get to watch their show. This tactic might have been effective five years to a decade ago, but it's been played out and people are seeing the truth behind the attack. The Walt Disney Company and Lucasfilm recently attempted a similar tactic. By the way, this is via Bounding in a Comics.com. Attempted a similar tactic with their Obi-Wan Kenobi series. While they might have gotten some short-term gains, in the long term it didn't work out. The company used actress Moses Ingram to try and gin up a controversy by accusing Star Wars fans of being racist. This was after Ingram revealed that she had been coached by Lucas, Lucasfilm to deal with quote-unquote racist backlash. She told The Independent it was something that Lucasfilm actually got in front of and said, that this was the thing, unfortunately, likely will happen, but we're here to help you. You can let us know if it happens. After the premiere, Ingram would try to put her coaching to work as she revealed a number of screenshots of mean words she received. Many of the screenshots were anything but abuse. Following this, Obi-Wan Kenobi debuted as the most watched original series with Disney+, Plus, with Nielsen reporting. The show's first three episodes reached 958 millions watched, million minutes. However, by the show's sixth and final episode, Obi-Wan Kenobi viewership had decreased to 860 million minutes viewed. The following week, the show did not even chart on Nielsen's top 10, with Netflix's Ozark in the 10th with 330 million minutes viewed. This means Obi-Wan Kenobi viewership was below 330 million minutes viewed a week after the season finale. Um, yeah, you know, that, I don't know if that necessarily means uh, is night, you know, for sure a bad thing. Given like uh, maybe everyone just watched it when it came out, um, but certainly there were no legs there where there's no rewatching. There's no, um, which is what Netflix really wants. You know what? Are you a rewatcher? I'm not really a rewatcher. I think I've seen like two movies ever twice in the theater. And I think one of them was Sonic because I wanted to, you know, support the movie. And then I think, um, Maybe Return of the King or Two Towers I might have saw twice. The tactic played out audience is played out the audience. See what it is. A helpless deflection from poor decisions that lead to a terrible show. Well, I mean, what's going to happen is, you know, predictably, right? Um, 
you know, it's diff it's going to be difficult to know exactly what kind of reviews and rating. I'm sorry, what kind of viewership ratings? Times are different now. Like Amazon could just lie. They're under no obligation to tell us how many people watch their new show. And it's easy to be the number one show on Amazon when they only have like a half dozen shows and they all air at different times and they don't compete with each other in the same way that traditional television did. And you could watch them on demand. Um, you know, meaning you, know, you weren't making the same choice between two shows that both aired at seven o'clock. You could watch one at seven and then go back and watch the other one at eight or nine. Um, but this has been a narrative that's been existing since, you know, February, since the original casting. You could see the gamer.com writing the Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Power have people of color. Get over it. Do you even token, bro? Like, I, I, I'm not kidding. Like, this is, that was an actual headline that was written. I mean, th this is, you see, Lord of the Rings, Rings of Power, Morford Clark takes on trolls for racially abusing black co-stars. Shut up. Uh, can anyone, can you show any examples of that? Or is it just criticism? You know, is it just people like laughing at the fact that we knew this is how Amazon was going to cast it? And by the way, I will say this. And I want, you know, to be clear, you can even have, I, I, I think it's still possible to force diversity and check boxes and still have a good show. It just hasn't happened yet. Like there are shows that I've seen that are like, you can tell that there's a lot of a care and attention done to like the casting, the crew, cast and crew, um, I, well, mostly just the cast, I suppose, that were still okay just because a cast is diverse does not mean it's inherently bad but what we've seen is innumerable examples of casts that are you know forcibly diverse where the writers think that's all it takes we saw this with you know batwoman supergirl uh or batwoman cat girl whatever all these like you know woke uh casting you know bat the batgirl movie 90 million dollars canceled they couldn't put together a good movie, but they sure had a Latina actress. You know, Batwoman went through two leads. Couldn't last. I mean, without good writing, the show is... I mean, there's so many characters in Middle Earth, you could certainly have them be diverse. But the idea that you have actors and actresses coming out now and virtue signaling and all this kind of garbage, it's just going to get worse. Uh, you know, it's going to be interesting to see as Rings of Power continues to, you know, perceivably double down. I mean, you had this article in the Daily Beast yesterday writing all about it. The whole thing is just, you know, it's, it's, uh, if, if you don't like it, you must be a racist. Cordova himself also was shut down, made sure to shut down the trolls before the critics hits prime video. The actor has been a fan of Lord of the Rings since childhood and nobody says, you know, and the thing is, like, I don't think that you have to be white to enjoy Lord of the Rings. That's absurd. Um, and just because he liked it does not mean he's owed a position in the movie. That's ridiculous. Uh, you know, and it's it's just funny how we're up for the whole, you know, we're calling everyone trolls. Where everyone's a troll. We're doing this. You know, diversity and inclusion, misogyny. You're going to see all the, the big buzzwords in the next couple of weeks that are going to lead to predictably high critic scores, and extremely low fan scores. I can almost guarantee it. I hope you enjoyed this video. We'll talk to you again real soon.